everyone, and welcome back to Rivervale. Oh, wait a second. That's not true, because we're here in the comfortable familiarity of Riverdale Season 6. Hello, everyone. I'm Omar Najam, joined by the most illustrious and incredible co-host. Hello, Sarah. How you doing? Hello, I'm Sarah Kaplan. Thank you so much, Omar. Every time you introduce me, it gets more and more complimentary, and I appreciate that. <laughs> I'm excited to see where it is by the end of the season. And that's right, we're finally back <laughs> in beautiful Riverdale. No more of that Splinter Universe nonsense. Uh, glad we're fully no, done no, with no. all that. And, uh, you know, one thing we're not fully done with, though, Omar. What's that? We're not fully done bringing on amazing guests to this podcast. Yes. And yes. this next guest, well-known Potter. That's with D's. I don't know if he does ceramics. Uh, with... <laughs> a well-known improviser. He he's on podcasts all over the place. He's also the coach of my Herald team. And uh you and he used to do improv together, I believe. Let's welcome to the pod. Yeah, we used to futz about. We used to futz about. It's very exciting. Hello. Welcome to the stage. Dan. Mr. Dan Lipper. Lipper. Hi. Hi, Dan. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if you want this to uh be like something that we hold on to for the end to keep people hooked, or I can tell you right now if I do any pottery. Yeah, I don't know uh, let's like save a, that till the very right end. All right. We got to get people holding on tight to the edge of their seats for that one. <laughs> yeah, and Omar, Omar and I know each other from college improv, different teams, but we, uh, we would, uh, uh, my team would go up the coast and do uh, yes. Omar's team's 24 hour improv festival. That's amazing. Uh, and, and then we would uh, we would cruise on down to your neck of the woods for some fracas. Yeah. We'd have a good weekend long time uh, reading some free Onion issues. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, we were sponsored by The Onion. That was a big deal for us. It was the, our college <laughs> put on the, um, what we called I mean, the country's only and biggest independent college improv <laughs> festival with only college performers. That's fantastic. And uh, being sponsored yeah, by The yeah. Onion is a huge deal. If this podcast were sponsored by The Onion, I'd be ecstatic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You hear that, mm -hmm. The Onion? Is The Onion still <laughs> around? That still exists. I think they like own UCB now. Someone does. Anyway, uh, Dan, you'll notice there's a fourth person in the little Zoom call here with us. That is our intrepid producer braving the waters of Riverdale right along with you because she also hasn't seen the show. And her name is mm -hmm. Azriel. Hi, Azzy. Hello. Oh my God. It's nice to be back. Uh, this is, <laughs> oof. Uh, we're back in Riverdale. I guess we'll talk about that, but man, uh, we're going to get into some, some tedium and some town hall meetings and there's nothing tedious <laughs> about a Riverdale town hall meeting. Always exciting. I'm sorry. And, and Dan, just so you know, uh, the entire podcast consists of one long segment called ask Azzy. If you have okay. any questions about an actor or about Riverdale lore or about mm -hmm. literally anything, uh, and you, we're too lazy to look stuff up on our own, so you can just ask <laughs> yeah. Azzy and she'll look it up for you. Right. All right. Thank you. Hi, Azzy. We actually, we hopped on so fast. I didn't say hi to you before we started. Yeah, hello. <laughs> so hello. Dan, um, what is your yeah. uh, relationship with Riverdale, Dan? Um, I knew... It, it just had the reputation of like, the show's actually crazy. Like <laughs> it, when it first came out, as I'm sure you've talked about, there was like a, Oh, Archie TV show. That's kind of like a high school drama on the CW. What's like, everyone kind of made fun of it. And then it started being like, no, the writers are having a lot of fun with this show. They are taking yeah. crazy <laughs> swings all the time. And I never, my roommate at the time had watched it, and I think I caught like some of an episode of the first first season. One is Luke Perry in it, or who who plays like a dad? Yeah, dad. yeah, yep, Luke Perry. Uh, that's my first ask, Azzy. Nice. <laughs> uh, um, but yeah, all I knew was that it was nuts. Yeah, that's uh, that's true. Yeah, and we actually it's calmed down at this point. Obviously, yeah, it's the, really mellowed out. The first season was <laughs> wild. It was all about high schoolers solving the mystery of a murdered classmate but by season six yeah it's totally mellow and normal <laughs> and uh, we haven't actually <laughs> talked about season one much at all because this podcast is not a riverdale rewatch podcast it's a riverdale mm -hmm. season six rewatch podcast okay and listener if you haven't seen any of riverdale 
that's okay. That's mm-hmm. okay. We're here to provide all the context necessary to understand this episode. And I'm sure by the end of this hour, you will have no questions left. <laughs> yes. Uh, so, Dan. Yeah. I just, you watched the episode. You watched episode six, correct? I did, yes. Yeah. What's kind of just first impression? What's like really stand out in your mind? <laughs> uh, so very, very, very first impression is... Mm-hmm. Uh, I have heard the name Cole Sprouse for years. Okay. I know Cole Sprouse is somebody. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. And then when I saw it in the credits, I was like, oh, Cole Sprouse. The name Cole Sprouse looked, <laughs> in my mind, looks like the guy who plays Archie. Oh, oh half, that's a Cole Sprouse type. Yeah. Okay. Halfway through the episode, I looked it up and it was like, oh, Jughead is Cole Sprouse. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He doesn't look like a Cole Sprouse to me for whatever reason. What's he look he, like to you? Uh, a Maybe Bobby. a KJ Appa? What's KJ Appa? That's oh, the Archie. Oh, that's Archie. That's Archie. Oh. <laughs> he looks like uh, a Bobby. <laughs> yeah, maybe a Bobby uh, or something like that. But he doesn't look like a... Like Cole Sprouse to me is like Midwestern football quarterback. Oh, that's okay. what that name sounds like. Oh, that's great. Cole, yeah. 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 Cole Sprouse, now you get back here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, starting yeah. quarterback for the St. Louis Timberwolves, it's Cole Sprouse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that makes sense to me. I can hear that. Not uh, one of those three specifics was accurately paired with the other specific for, <laughs> uh, <laughs> for sports. You, you, you nailed uh, a city and a team. No, that the St. Louis Timberwolves are a sport. high school team. Oh, uh, okay, then I'll take it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Foot, a lot of great talent foot, on that team. Football is actually the only sport I watch. So, uh, but yeah, there's actually a lot of football in the earlier seasons. Mm-hmm. And KJ Appa, aka Archie, apparently, I didn't know that was his name until today. I only know them as their character <laughs> names. Um, he is a quarterback. But mm-hmm. yeah. But now so, he's unemployed and strong. Yeah, now he's an, un- <laughs> yeah. he's an unemployed construction worker, not even unionized. Same. Um. Yeah. So we, you know, before we hop into how everyone's doing, um, sort of this American graffiti end credits sort of uh, catch up. Uh, could I ask, you know, we're back in Riverdale. Dan, could you tell us where we were before? Um, just gleaning from everyone's references. Um, so you bo- saying that there was maybe another universe we were in is news to me. Uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, uh, wait, so watching this, you didn't get the sense that episodes one through five mostly took place in the splinter universe of Rivervale, where all things are possible and magic is real? This is insane to me. No, this is not indicated <laughs> at, at all. Oh, okay. Did you, at the very least, did you get a sense that in episode one, Archie was sacrificed um, <laughs> by the entire town in order to have Betty be instantaneously pregnant with someone who would later be the Maple King in 25 years? You know, that was subtextually in some of this episode, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I would for say. Sure, for sure. Uh, now, what are you saying? I'm like, oh, yeah, of course. Yeah, <laughs> the Maple King. But yeah. now in the episode, uh, I would not. If you had, if you had written down like a bunch of words to connect to each other, uh-huh. it was mm-hmm. like Maple King, Betty, pregnant. I, I don't know that I would have picked those as part of this episode or this oh. world. I would say. Okay, yeah. that's interesting. In all fairness, the baby did disappear when Betty's stomach was touched by La Llorona. That's um, true. Before Tony that's became true. the ghost herself. Yeah. She yeah. made an appearance. Okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. She's the <laughs> main, big main it character was a real big of uh, episode two, I believe. Is she, uh, does it follow the same sort of type of writing as I think Veronica's character where she speaks full English, but then throws in one Spanish word to let you know that she's... <laughs> Uh, I'm gonna get your baby, Hermana. No, because La Llorona <laughs> is not Hispanic. She, she's no. a she's a, an early British colonist of the first first settlers of Riverdale. Ah, uh, is that the actual the actual lore of La Llorona, or did they no. take the only in, only in the only in the Splinter the universe of Rivervale is that the actual okay. lore? Yeah. Uh, but let's yeah. let's get back into Riverdale because we're done with Enough alternate that. universes. There's nothing. No forces will be crossing over. No causality will stretch between the two. 
certainly no one will get any sort of powers or abilities from one or the other. That We're back where things make sense. We're, we're in a grounded story, everybody. Yeah, Riverdale has returned to its rules of seasons one through five, where no matter how magical things may seem, they will always be explained. Mm-hmm. Just like how True Detective does it and disappoints <laughs> its fan base season by season. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but as you mentioned, Archie is strong. Yeah. He can put his hand through knives and nails without feeling anything. Damn. When he's displaying this power, um, if if someone said to you, hey, something very strange. This happens a lot in Super Strong. Like, this happened in Heroes as well a couple times with the cheerleader. Um, where a character might be like, I'm indestructible. Watch. <laughs> I was just really quickly to all of us. How would you feel if a friend that you've known for a good amount of time was like, hey, I've overnight developed impenetrable skin. Can I show you? And then they go for a scalpel. Do they um, succeed? I, I would probably sit quietly across from them at the bar and do absolutely nothing until I see them do it. And then after they do it, I'd go, oh. <laughs> yeah, I'm not. I'm OK, it depends on the friend. I have some friends where I might be like, no, we need to stop. And like, before you stab yourself with the scalpel, I just want to make sure have you taken your meds? Have you, et cetera. Yeah. Uh, but I have other friends yeah. where if they said that, I'd be like, I'll wait and see. Yeah. 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 I think, I think Dan's example is like, if this is like your significant other, you've known throughout your entire <laughs> life and they have not disclosed this information until just now, but they seem to have like puttered around with this for a good couple days. Yeah. Uh, at the very least. Um, but yeah, so Archie's developing tough skin, which is something you need in this industry. Yeah, I mean, you can push um, nails out of boards so easily. I don't know if that's the greatest way to exemplify that you've developed unbreakable abilities. Oh, yeah, I guess if here's a new question. Dan, if you had just developed what seems to be impenetrable skin and supernatural strength, what would you do to show it off to other people? Uh, yeah, that's a good question. I. You know, I was watching this, asking myself, because I'm also watching the show Evil, which I would, by I the way, Evil. very highly recommend. <laughs> yeah, yes, good. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, and I'm just getting into it, and I've watched like almost two seasons in a week. But, <laughs> um, and you watch it, and you do, like there is a lot of horror type stuff where you're like, "What would I yeah. do in this situation?" I know it's like a TV show, so they have to kind of dramatize it. But everyone seems too casual about really crazy stuff. Yeah, totally. <laughs> Um, I think I would in, in based on my history, I would sit in my room and spin out about it for a really long yeah. time alone for like a weekend. Yeah. I would mm -hmm. like panic. I would Google stuff. Uh, mm -hmm. I would be like, I would not respond to texts. Totally. And then mm -hmm. I'd go on a walk on Monday and be like, oh, this is. Uh, now that I'm in the world, this is kind of odd. I'm going to talk to somebody about this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And see what's going on. But I, I probably wouldn't do anything with nails or knives. <laughs> I don't know what I would do. Because you do have to hurt yourself. Mm -hmm. Maybe yeah. headbutt a wall or something. Okay, yeah. That's cool. Yeah. I think I'd like hand my friends a bat and just be like, have at it. <laughs> Really? Mm. I, I think because that would be fun to them. Like, I yeah. think if I had an invulnerable friend, I, I'd want to go. If you could make it into a game. Yeah. Sh yeah. Gamify the super. You know what I would do? I would go up to some mosquitoes. <laughs> that to me, <laughs> like, I don't get hurt often. Like, yeah. I don't I, I don't have my skin um, uh, cut very often uh, in, in my line of work. Maybe paper at most. <laughs> so, like. I think mosquitoes would be the one where I would walk into just a place infested with mosquitoes and I'd be like, good luck giving me malaria. I would love <laughs> to see you try. Love to see it. I think that's a great idea. In um, LA, you have to be more worried about West Nile than malaria, but. That's a good point. I would still say <laughs> malaria as the poll, uh, but I understand I'm batting to like a lower common denominator <laughs> for the reference. And I'm going to go out on a limb and say the mosquitoes don't care how you intimidate them <laughs> <laughs> no i don't know for sure yeah yeah that would and that's what i would share with my friends of like i tried to intimidate some mosquitoes oh also i have unbreakable skin sorry i should have said that <laughs> um uh, dan and then yeah dan 
there's so much to get through in this episode. I kind of have notes. <laughs> I try. I do my best when I watch these to take notes of each like beat as it comes up. And I'm just going to run you through my notes for now. Stop me when you have something to say or questions that need to be answered. Okay. Right. Tony and Fangs are dating, but they're still both very bisexual and part of the queer community. Mm-hmm. Yep. That that was interesting to me. That definitely was. <laughs> uh, I noted that in my head of like, it, it seemed like a joke. Like it was making fun of like uh, attractive, mostly straight people who like commodify. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. But then I was like, oh no, maybe this is just a serious part of the plot that they had to put in there for some reason for like a yeah. later both, plot point. Both Fangs and Tony were in multi-season long gay relationships with other characters. Okay. Yeah. Um, it, I mean, I'm glad they just put it out there. That that conversation also mm-hmm. seemed like, I was like, oh, maybe part of the history of the show is these three characters are in therapy or something because they're talking nice. so, they're using such <laughs> oh, actually, like, therapy language with each other that I thought it was like <laughs> on the nose on purpose. They're talking to Kevin in that scene. And the history of that three little thruple is Kevin and Fangs used to be dating. And they mm-hmm. asked Kevin, tony to have a baby like with them as sort of a third platonic parent and okay then fangs and kevin break up and fangs ends up with tony so it's actually a whole messy situation but yeah like treating it like couples therapy is actually pretty accurate (laughs) and it makes perfect sense uh obviously i don't want to uh uh it's obvious who's who but just remind me which one would be (laughs) named fangs and which one is tony yeah (laughs) <laughs> yeah, it really is kind of a toss up, isn't it? Fangs, Fangs <laughs> is the dad and Tony is the mom. Okay. Okay. Uh, Not what my guess was. All right. <laughs> <laughs> um, and they're both sort of the king and queen of the Southside Serpents, obviously. Um, okay. My father, he blew up Archie's house. That one's self explanatory. Um, yeah, actually, it's pretty straightforward. I, I have to pause there. Sure. The when she like jolts up in bed and is like, it was my dad. It had to have been my dad who sent the bomb. Yeah. Mm-hmm. As somebody who has not watched any of the seasons of Riverdale where Hiram Lodge is there, mm-hmm. uh, it's truly a wild jump. Oh, well, uh, for, for reference, he's the bad guy in season five and tried to kill Archie many, many times. Uh huh. And yeah, also sort of like through. he also sort of sold Archie into like a um, prison fighting ring. Yeah, sort of an underground juvenile delinquent fighting ring <laughs> at one point. Okay. Uh, <laughs> and why does he hate Archie? Oh, good question. Because he's um, a perfect boy. Is it because he's a perfect boy? Yeah, Archie's a perfect boy. Uh, by the by, season five they're fighting because Hiram Lodge is trying to um, basically okay. He's trying to get Riverdale to agree to disenfranchise itself as an official town so that Hiram Lodge can obtain the land because there's massive deposits of palladium beneath the town yes. site. Okay. Yeah. So Hiram Lodge's plan is to just force the town into such severe poverty that they just disband as a civic entity. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. And our Which, by the way, is a strategy it. that works. It does work uh, really well. I'm not well. saying do it, but it I'm works saying, great. you know... Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that's Hiram Lodge. He blew up the house. Uh, one of my favorite mm-hmm. lines of this episode Britannia, can't you see I'm doing scholarly research? <laughs> <laughs> uh, we get like a whole Cheryl plot. Nana Rose burned the curse. That all makes sense, I assume, Dan. No oh, questions. the Nana Rose reveal is incredible. It's just two people talking <laughs> shit. Like for me, watching this for the first time, mm-hmm. uh, a young girl, maybe <laughs> high schoolish age, comes in and calls another youngish looking woman <laughs> mistress. Yes. And so I'm like, okay, what is this about? <laughs> they're talking for a moment and then there's just a quick pan over to an old lady with one eye watching <laughs> yeah so when she says mistress I just want to clarify there's nothing sexual or inappropriate there Cheryl uh, Cheryl has turned her ancestral estate of Thornhill into a school for sort of wayward girls and they've become kind of just like her little troop of bow and arrow wielding Girl Scouts. Okay. And and that's her grandmother that's there? That's her grandmother. Okay. Yes, for now. 
Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, so, okay. I, I assume that would all make sense. We now are reminded that Bingo exists. Archie has a dog. And I love Bingo. bingo. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. No notes on Bingo. I was a little hurt that they didn't like look for Bingo initially. Yeah, there's like uh, our house yeah. blew up. And, and then they're like, damn, what's under that rubble? Oh shit, our dog. <laughs> yeah. Long after other people have already come to the house, like hours have passed. <laughs> yeah. They've chatted about the investigation it. has yeah, been conducted. Uh, I, I I do have a bit of a note on the the doctor. Good okay. news, bingo's fine. Bad news, bingo's four legs are broken. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Yes. Yeah. What's your note? Uh, well, I, I th- in my mind, that's like almost grounds to put a dog down. Sometimes, <laughs> like, yeah. It can't it's not a racehorse. Yeah. Um, so I, I th- that delivery, I don't know, but I guess the doctor might have known what was coming. No spoilers, but yeah. Mm. To uh, to harken back to a previous episode, I will say one time my mom called me and said, "Hey, just want to let you know everything's fine. Um, it's just your aunt and your uncle um, have gotten back from India." And I was like, "Cool." My dad did just tell me that you lost my turtle, um, <laughs> so everything is kind of not fine. So kinda, my mom gets a little bit of the Riverdale Vet Award there. Okay. Yeah. Uh, to but to speed up because we did do this live uh, in a previous episode. They did find the turtle. Yes. Uh, okay, so wow. The turtle is in the back fine. Yet. The turtle is fine. This is a, a desert turtle or an amphibious turtle? This is a red-eared slider, America's finest. <laughs> and that doesn't folks, help me, actually. Folks, if you, if you don't remember <laughs> from the previous episode, don't release your turtles into the wild. They're carriers for diseases. Mm-hmm. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Good to know. Xander's a sick, sick boy. Yeah. He's fine, but he'd make other turtles sick, sick boys. Okay. Uh, speaking of sick, sick boys, Jughead's going deaf. It's and he's not happy about it. Um, yeah this is but uh, again first time watch it's really mm-hmm. fun to be in what you think is just kind of like a teen drama and then to get reminded every once in a while where someone just goes jughead you should go to the hospital and you're like oh that's right this guy's <laughs> name is jughead and they're all just calling him that <laughs> uh yeah um okay we find ourselves at the white worm dan, we're back dan if you had to yeah. guess what Jughead's real full name is, because it is one of my favorite bits of, of yeah, it's a good bit of Riverdale lore. Oh, uh, I feel like I remember when it was going around the internet, but I'm not going to remember it. Like you're saying, Jughead is short for something, or just yeah. like, it's like Jughead. Okay, yeah. so he has a full, full first, middle, and last name. Uh, James Uglyhead. Yeah. He's not going to get it. Oh, that's a good he, guess. James Uglyhead is very close. <laughs> as he, as as he wants yeah. the name. Uh, it's Forsyth Pendleton Jones the third, of course. <laughs> of course. Uh, so Forsyth is going deaf. Uh, we're at the White Worm now with Tony and Fangs, and they're dropping lines like, "The Ghoulies firebombed Pops, and then they bombed Archie's house." Um, yeah, I assume no questions. <clears throat> um, the questions do get answered for me in this episode eventually. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah they actually do. <laughs> um, yeah, it's a it's a perfect circle of an episode, really. I, I, I do wonder why these people are in a biker gang and running a bar, mm-hmm. but um, that that you know, I don't know if that is part of the build of the show or if it started that way in the first. There's season. a lot of it there's is, a lot was, of build for there for yeah. that. It's a little hard to go to Rivervale where things are supposed to be corrupt and perverted and distorted and horrific and then come back and they're like, oh, yeah, remember how they carpet bombed um, Pops? I'm like, this is a much worse universe. That's a terrible <laughs> yeah, thing. There's that no happened. ghosts. Yeah. Oh, there's no ghosts. That's a good point. Yeah, that's the big difference. <laughs> yeah. Fewer yeah, bombs, I am scared of ghosts. more ghosts. <laughs> um, I always try to take note of every time they say baby Anthony because I think that's uh-huh. hilarious. Mm hmm. Okay, we're we're removing we're reversing curses by burning down beeswax. Easy enough. Yeah. Um, what infernal game is my nana playing? <laughs> yeah, we we never know what infernal game our nana's playing. Ah, uh, shoot. Okay, well, I don't even know what my notes mean anymore. I have my school chums. I have Trevor in red. Trevor's all caps. Seems like it was important. Oh, Trevor was the uh, the nurse at the uh, the hospital. Oh, yeah. oh, right, right. Thank you so much, Dan. Yes, glowing. Trevor has the glowing red aura. What did you think yeah. that meant when you encountered it? Uh, evil, honestly. I've been watching enough evil that I kind of mm-hmm. get what they're going for there. Mm-hmm. Um, I definitely 
thought he was going to be more of like a sick in the head guy, not just like a pill thief. <laughs> um, not just like a, a, a nurse throat slitting pill thief. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but the big surprise here for me was a couple scenes earlier when oh, yeah. was it Betty or Veronica? Uh, Betty puts on the FBI jacket and I was like, oh, <laughs> she wears it like a Goodwill FBI jacket. Oh, right, right. You didn't know that he was in the FBI. <laughs> yes, shortly after yeah. she's doing like the Tommy Lee Jones, like, all right, we're gonna, here's how we're gonna like attack this case. There's like, uh-huh. oh, she's in the FBI. <laughs> yeah. None of these people are in high school anymore, uh, I o- guess. Omar, do you want to explain quickly Betty's history with the FBI? Sure, I would love to. You know, there was a killer in Riverdale, and we'll make this really brief. There was a killer in Riverdale that was calling up Betty and haunting Betty. She wanted to find who it was. Simultaneously, she found out she had a missing brother um, who um, moved in, and they know they're related because they had crescent moon um, shapes on their hands when they would clench their fists too much, and that's a genetic trait. Turns out, not a genetic trait. That brother, not her brother. Not her brother brother works in the FBI. Mom, working with the FBI, which is why she was in the organ harvesting cult in order to see her brother. Everyone thought she was going crazy, but she when she said it helps me see your brother it was actually like she's working with the fbi he's an agent turns uh, out the killer was her dad but the problem with that is that there is a genetic disorder which is called the su- the serial killer gene which the dad has and passed down to betty betty has a serial killer gene but luckily that allows her to find killers now granted that does make this power a little redundant considering her super <laughs> her serial killer gene would allow her to know serial killers but this is kind of a nice confirming sort of like um assassin's creed-esque like this item is important come like to go check it out yeah. kind of thing right. anyway that's kind of the full catch-up that and that's why she's Omar. got the goodwill yeah, jacket great job thank you thank yeah you. i think the aura helps with seeing intentions which is useful her serial killer gene works like the if you've seen the show prodigal son um it's about a sherlock holmes type whose dad is a a, a serial killer and i think the, the, the genetic son shout out yeah great show <laughs> uh the the genetic disposition to serial killing i think helps her like get in the mind of a killer when she's trying to catch one Okay. But this is a good warning system. Um, I hope that all makes sense now, Dan. It does it, for sure. Yeah. And it's 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 someone with malintent is the red glow, is that correct? Yeah. In general? I, I think intention to harm Betty specifically is how it's manifesting right now. Yeah. No, because actually Great. Trevor didn't want to harm Betty. I think it's just people who intend to do bad things. <laughs> Yeah, okay. she said. Did she say she could see people's energies or something like that? She's or calling auras? it an aura. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sure. I feel like like saying I'll pay you back on Venmo, but not that would that activate the aura? Yeah. Because that's malintent in a way. I don't think I don't think it would right now. <laughs> okay. It, it, okay. We've got bigger things to tackle. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we we only know for sure she's seen it with sexual assault and slitting throats. So I, yeah, I, okay, that's a lot bigger than Venmo. I apologize yeah. for making <laughs> that, that <laughs> gross <equivalent>. comparison. Um, <laughs> okay, uh, next line I've got written down here. I did have FBI Betty recorded. Daddy yes. had so many chances. I'm reaching out to the underworld and putting a bounty on his head. Sure. That yeah. was another one of my favorite lines. <laughs> <laughs> Just Veronica, Veronica saying, "I'm reaching out to the underworld" is yeah. awesome. It's great. Yeah, um, and the and the underworld is just like the like, la, like what's it called the like uh, dark web or something like that. That's just yeah, like Task Rabbit. It's in, not actually in, hell or anything like that. <laughs> oh, good question. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, okay. In this instance, no. Yeah, uh, it's good foresight though because the devil is an actual character this season. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. yeah, and we're not just talking about Lou Cipher, Mr. Cipher, first name Lou. <laughs> yeah, uh, Lou Cipher is a character. Um, oh my god, who has appeared in Rivervale? Uh, but spoiler alert, he's gonna come back. Okay, um, I like so good that. instincts there, Dan. <laughs> but no, she just means the criminal underworld. Yeah. Um, now we have Glenn being a little punk ass bitch. I like that he oh, calls okay. Archie dismissively that pipsqueak when Archie is like. At this a point hero? in the town, a war hero and famous <laughs> boxer. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah. So, and it, yeah. Anyway, that doesn't matter. Glenn, Glenn sucks. Fuck Glenn. Okay. Um, Anatole. Any thoughts on Anatole or Anatoly? I don't know how it's spelled. 
Uh, I've forgotten who this is. That's who, the, who hit, is the, the Russian hitman. <laughs> yes. What? Do, uh, yeah, I feel like I, I watched the this an hour ago and I don't remember <laughs> this. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's fine. You don't have to. Um, he's um so he essentially he's a gentleman who an hour ago watched like Eastern Promises and was like got it yeah. and so he comes in and he's like uh and I won't do a voice because we don't do that here um uh but he says like you know what would you like me to do you want to take care of your father I'll get it done don't even worry about it yeah how do we feel about Veronica putting out a hit on her dad yeah Dan that's a good Still question for you check. how do you feel about Veronica check. putting a hit out on her dad torn because he's got he's gotten away with it so many times i don't know what exactly but uh <laughs> i guess she doesn't trust law enforcement anymore and is kind of taking a punisher route but i will say again to spoil the end of it if she's will if all it takes is seeing a different dad in the hospital to change her mind <laughs> mm-hmm, she should have mm-hmm. maybe sat with it a little bit longer yeah might have been a little yeah. quick you bring up a really good point um her friend does work for the fbi well, yeah. Betty had already asked her. That's like the reason she had all that intel is because Betty had requested it. And then yeah. Veronica yeah. unilaterally is like, actually, I'm going to take this to, to Anatole. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, look, it's a wild choice. I think mostly they couldn't get Hiram Lodge for the season and they needed to quickly <laughs> establish why. Yeah, that's a good read. Yeah. I, I think what, what struck me watching this is it's all description of things that are happening without any like emotional weight like right. nobody yes. like enters a scene with one expectation discovers something and changes their mind it's just them <laughs> kind of having those off screen and then saying what happened since then yeah over and over again yeah that's that is exactly how it works there's a lot more action in previous seasons and there will be a lot more action in this season but for now, we're really describing stuff when Archie goes. We're and, just kind of setting stuff up. Yeah. In terms of Anatole, um, Dan, especially since you kind of like he kind of glossed over your memory. I remember would the you phone say, call afterwards with him. Oh, sorry, <laughs> yeah, the casual phone call. <laughs> I was just about to call you. <laughs> yeah, you, I'm sure Anatole. I'm oh, sure also, you saw the number pop up. And on, you're like, That's what on I forgot. That note, I, I know you have a thing you're saying, Omar, but just real quick. Mm-hmm. If you're a professional hitman. Do you send photographic evidence of your hits via email? No. <laughs> yeah, I probably wouldn't email it. <laughs> okay, yeah, just right here. check your inbox was just a wild move. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, would you say, um, how would you compare Anatole, the um, hired killer, to a previous villain? Like, for example, Papa Poutine. How would you <laughs> uh, compare the two, Dan? I can't be a character. <laughs> Well, I, I do like that they both do sound foreign. Uh, uh-huh. <laughs> Papa Poutine may be French Canadian. Is that the idea there? Uh, yeah. Like, is that like the well, his, gravy killer, like a gravy cheese curd kind of killer? His To give a little context, his kid, who he later meet, who's a very large man um, who busts into the Lodge estate, is called Small Fry. Mm-hmm. If that uh, breaks the sort of foreign nom- nomenclature, I like that. Um, I do. I do just want you to have all the information you possibly <laughs> could have when it comes to comparing these killers. Okay, yeah, I think that I, I'm much more curious about Papa Poutine based on name than I would be about Anatole, who seems a little more one dimensional. <laughs> sure, <laughs> sure. Uh, yeah, well, um, if you had to guess real quick, is Anatole going to maintain his status as an important character this season? No. Correct. He gets killed mm. next episode. Um, yeah. Spoilers yeah. for our listeners who haven't seen the show, which I assume is all of you. If you've watched Riverdale, we don't even want you listening to this podcast. Yeah. That's not true. If you're doing the show right, this is your first episode. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, back to the thing. Nail hands, punching door. We've been over that. It's time to mm-hmm. catch the septuagenarian saboteur crimson handed. Um, mm-hmm. Cheryl Great has writing. such a way with words. Uh, this is another one of those like action off screen moments when Archie fights the ghoulies. Sure. Yeah. yeah. They did not want to do the fight choreography for this no one. No way did they want to pay for that. <laughs> <laughs> if someone showed up at your doorstep and was covered in blood and you're like, oh my God, are you hurt? And they went, no, it's someone else's. <laughs> How would you feel? Again, is it similar to the breaking a knife in a bar right. question, I suppose? It, it would really, really scare me. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a very normal uh, what if it's, response. What if yeah. it's your, your like, husband, basically? Yeah, I think still pretty scared. Uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> and last follow-up question, question 3C. Um, if he clarified, oh, this is ghouly blood, would that kind of maybe put you at rest? Uh, then it's dinner time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hit the showers, I'll have a nice lasagna on the table, and we don't even need to ask any follow-ups. <laughs> that, that, that's interesting. Why are you asking about my day? It's interesting yeah. that that's how you would respond, because I think for me, Mm -hmm. I would probably bring him into my job at the FBI, maybe. Uh, mm -hmm. Is that where it is? No. Who does Betty confront? She, um, she, Glenn. <laughs> it's Glenn, yeah? Yeah. Yes. And then Archie's the one who grabbed... Okay, so yeah, I'd bring him to the FBI to confront the, my boss who sexually harassed me. No, and, no, no, no. Mm -hmm. Betty does not bring Archie there. No, okay. I, I just have this line to go take out mm -hmm. Trevor, the the murderous Trevor, overlay. Thank you. Yes. Okay. Thank we you so much. Because yeah. okay. right. all I wrote six, down was six, the line I wouldn't do that if I were you, bro. <laughs> Not unless you want me to break yes. both your arms. And he will. And he will. <laughs> and he will. Yeah. He fucking will. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Thank you so much, Azzy. That's what I would do. I would bring my husband to the hospital to track down the murderous orderly. Yeah. And have him try yeah. to break He's, both his arms. Can the FBI get away? The FBI gets away with a lot of stuff. This is all probably all above board, right? As far as the FBI is concerned. I have a uh, one of my best friends from high school is an FBI agent. I can reach out ooh. and confirm. That'd be okay. great. Yeah, send this episode and be like, how accurate is this? Did you consult on this? <laughs> yeah. Once we finish the season, I'll see if Derek will come on for a, an FBI special episode. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great idea. Um, I Derek, am waiting for... Oh, go ahead. Oh, Derek, if I'm not supposed to tell people you're in the FBI, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> great, you cleared that one right up. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I am every time I see the like ghoulies like the toughs behind the main woman. Yeah, I am mm -hmm. waiting for them to break into song. Start oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The they serpents are ghoulies like, are complete sharks and jets energy. Yes, they've got great eyeliner. They are chiseled face. They're like they are right off of a casting call for for like yeah yeah uh, the community theater musical. And that is the only I'm, kind of street mm -hmm. rumble I'm personally interested in. Yeah. Yeah. Just a little, a <laughs> little bit of this. Um, I personally love the fact that they're like, oh my God, the ghoulies have someone in charge from Chicago. <laughs> Full on our Chicago, like our existing city Chicago. Yeah. How much well, do yeah. they do that? A lot. Like Archie's it. mom lives in Chicago. Yeah, yeah. It's it's bonkers to me that they keep reaching out. It would be like if Superman was like, anyway, I have to go to Fresno for yeah. something. And you're like, yeah, you do? <laughs> okay. This, this brings up a weird thing for me, because they will name real places. Yeah. Yeah. They name real but towns. Fully replace other real things. But it's like yeah. they won't say Haley's Comet, it's Bailey's Comet. They yeah. won't say Martha's Vineyard, it's Marsha's Vineyard. Thank you so okay. That actually really threw me off. I thought I was losing my mind. You're being I was like, have I said it wrong my entire <laughs> life? <laughs> yeah. Well, are are you not a reader of the Wall Beat Journal, Omar? <laughs> I I dropped off, unfortunately, I'll be honest with you. I always thought that um Martha's Vineyard was owned by Martha Stewart. Did anyone else is anyone else in that, that camp? That honestly feels like a good assumption. I think uh, Thank you. Uh, I is it not? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. I think it's existed longer than Martha Stewart has been mm. on this this wonderful. World. That's crazy. I think maybe in this timeline that's true, but I'd imagine there's yeah. a timeline where that's not true. Yeah, yeah. Ah, bless. So we're, we're so we got we've got most of Archie's story under wraps. We got uh, Jughead's is pretty straightforward. Yeah, right? he's going down. He's losing his hearing. He's having a hard time. He doesn't want to learn ASL. I I like how much. In this show, I feel like I'm being set up for a pretty classic, dramatic 
thing and then the mm-hmm. stakes become way lower i was like oh this is like ptsd <laughs> this is like mm-hmm. he's not facing that he has a concussion and it's going to get worse and then it's just yeah. like no he actually just couldn't hear anyone because the way they were playing it was like yeah. he was distracted or his mind was elsewhere it's very it was yeah. literally just losing his hearing <laughs> very like shell shock kind of yeah uh, audio editing um, would it um help to know um, that we are a couple episodes away from Forsyth um, hearing people's thoughts. He's losing his hearing, but he can hear people's thoughts. That was going to be my follow up. Is is this his special power kind of coming it is. in? Yeah, yes. it is indeed. Uh, That's a, uh, yeah. So they're they're going full like the, the like Smallville here this season. Yeah, yeah. that's fair to say. Yeah. yeah, we've got yeah full yeah full, all all things are on the table now. Um, superpowers, which is immortal racist and, warlocks, and you're even yeah. more right because we do later on get a crypto. Mm-hmm. He does. Mm-hmm. Oh, the dog. He does. His dog. Oh yeah, oh. I guess that's right. Yeah, yeah. His dog yeah. does get superpowers as well. Man, imagine yeah. being in this writer's room and pitching something that people turn down. I don't think it's possible. <laughs> uh, we're yeah, like, oh no, that doesn't really work. And it's like, huh? There's a lot. And of- what if dancing werewolf? And they're like, please be serious. <laughs> we, it's it's a huge responsibility to be in the living rooms of America, and we take that very seriously. So please, can you not joke around while we're trying to do work? What I what I appreciate about Riverdale, though, on this note, is I I think. When I tell people that I wanted, like, I've been telling people for multiple years, I want to do a Riverdale season six podcast. Mm-hmm, and I mm-hmm. try my best to explain to them what the season is and why it's exciting. And, and Omar was the first person who was a kindred spirit and, and connected with me on this level. But it's not like Riverdale isn't a so bad, it's funny thing. It's not the room. The writers are 100% yeah. in on the joke. Mm-hmm. but yeah. i think they walk a really great line of like they're in on it but it's not it's not like intentional feeling bad camp it's like they're in on it but they're taking it seriously but it's almost like we can't turn down any idea so how do we fit that in to the emotional tenor of the show yeah yeah it's very it's like post postmodern. Yeah, it's yeah. it's great. Where it's like, what words can we get these hot young people to have to say? Correct. <laughs> and <laughs> so many kudos to the actors for delivering these lines. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I my I, only yeah. um uh experience with Charles Melton was in uh May December and I thought he was so great in that movie. He's incredible. And yeah. so I was mm-hmm, very excited mm-hmm. to see what uh, what his training ground was in this <laughs> and, and you would not believe it <laughs> um, would you believe me if I told you that in episode three his character ends up in, in a manly and confident way allowing the devil to drag him down to burn in the fiery pits of hell wow episode three of this season yeah mm-hmm. But, mm-hmm. Um, I, I mean, I could see him doing anything. He was so supportive. Uh, <laughs> well, what's crazy is that that was only after he tricks Veronica Lodge into selling her soul to the devil in order to guarantee the success of the Byzantium casino. Okay, of course. And none of this. Oh, sorry, has the Babylonium, effect. not the Byzantium. Yeah. <laughs> Embarrassing. None of yeah. this has an effect on the second half of the season, or do they kind of. Did, was that wrapping up a different season? Like. It no, that was this season. <laughs> it was just in the Splinter universe of Rivervale. My right. nicest and best answer is it doesn't really matter. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It wraps um, up that episode for sure. Yeah, it's a great moment. Okay, let's let's move forward. Um, mm-hmm. Something is very wrong with Britta. And now, perchance, Abigail controls the girl's body at night. Yeah. <laughs> we must perform. A banishment. I just love. I love anything Nana Rose says. I love. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we're really getting some real big plan this episode. Did you mm-hmm. write down her incantation, her secret one? Oh no, it was some Latin. It was like some spiritus. Uh, it was Latin, but I think they made it like, like 
as if a frat boy wrote it. I think she says like cum or something like that. Like there's some sort of. Let me pull it up. Let me, let me pull it up for you. Unum 69. Yeah. <laughs> pull, pull it when, up. Uh, when, they, when they are doing that ritual, Abigail's spirit yelling out of Britannia's body goes, untie me, you wretched women. <laughs> I is do love that. <laughs> Okay. All right. I'm pulling. I'm pulling up the clip. Other people talk. Okay. 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 If, uh, if you had to guess where the Abigail storyline is going, um, Dan, what would you say? Um. Geez, I couldn't even. I mean, now that I know that she runs like a kind of a coven already. Yeah. It seems like she's going to use them to. I don't really know how she relates at all in the world of Riverdale because she didn't interact with any okay. of the other characters. Mm -hmm. uh, right. <laughs> but I'm guessing that she's going to try to take over the town and maybe get revenge mm -hmm. through Nana uh, on um, on the men that burned her kind of vibe. Oh, interesting, interesting. Would you say that maybe Tony Topaz has something to do with that because Tony's ancestor was um, the lover of Abigail, but they couldn't be together because Fang's ancestor um, oh cursed uh, Abigail while killing um, Tony? And would you also say that Poppy, uh, who you did not meet in this episode, but also Cheryl never existed in the pocket universe and were actually a, a, a creation of the immortal Abigail? Word for word, that's how I would have described it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's uh, generational trauma. That's what that's what we're exploring I, here. I just yes. listened to it, and um, I was too lazy to actually mute the Zoom call, so I was trying to hear what she was saying <laughs> over this podcast discussion. Sorry. <laughs> no, no, that's fine. I was being lazy. Uh, but from what I could tell, I think she is just saying, like, she says, like, spiritus imperati. I think she's saying, like, spirit be ordered. I think she's okay. saying, like, to switch bodies. No, no come. No been, come in there. No come stuff. I might have That's been That's unfortunate. Uh, yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's, it's, this, this, this show takes itself seriously in yeah, that regard. Yeah, it's mistake. And um, thank you for asking that question, though, Dan, because it's so rare that I get to use my nine years of Latin that I took in school. <laughs> did you really? I did, yeah. So can you tell us what she says, like, translated? Yeah, she says, uh, she's saying, like, spirit be ordered to switch to the correct body. Is a spell just saying a direct command in Latin? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Well, That's kind of, like, a lot of easier time, than, like, a Zatanna spell, right? A lot of times <laughs> the spells in this world are just badly written rhymes in English. Oh, that's a good point. There was that <laughs> one where it's like, your bones will grow old, your bones will grow old. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Okay, moving on. Percival Pickens wants to buy Archie Andrews' childhood home. Do you trust this guy, Dan? Would you sell him your house? I don't, I wouldn't. I really wouldn't. Um, mm. I, he He's just so confident the way he comes into that house. Mm. Um, yeah. I don't know why he would want it for so much money. It feels <laughs> like even the alliterative name I don't really trust in the business card <laughs> for Does, me. Yeah. Speaking of the business card, though, it doesn't make you trust him more when it says Percival Pickens entrepreneur. And those are the only <laughs> words on the business card. No, it's too. It's like um, it's like those guys on on my Instagram discover page that uh, the guy that's like, would you kill your mom? If someone was going to kill your mom, would you be able to make one hundred thousand dollars more a year? And they're like, yeah. And he's like, well, you should be able to do it without them going to kill your mom. It's like one of those guys, you know. Dude, that is the most motivational thing I've ever heard. I'm so ready that to really sharpen my grind set. <laughs> wow. Uh, yeah, Dan, if you had to guess, who is Percival Pickens? What's his deal? The devil, I'll say. I'll say he's the devil. Mm, that, is, okay. that is embarrassingly wrong. Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, he's, a, he's an immortal racist warlock from 1640s who sold his soul to the devil in exchange for unimaginable magic power. Uh, but really embarrassing that you guessed the, the devil. I know. <laughs> it, it was not the best deal he's ever made. I'll be honest. <laughs> Which yeah. is weird because other people in at least in River Vale sold their soul, and they didn't get incredible magic powers. They either well, got... that's actually a big part of the season, Azzy. So stay tuned. Oh, okay, 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 okay. 
I yeah. put my full unabated faith within the writers of Riverdale. And yes. Every, look, this is the most efficient show ever created. They're not going to do something that doesn't come back into play with a very explicitly laid out explanation. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, uh, I, I definitely... Um, For a warlock, feels like after 300 years of training, <laughs> he's still pretty bad of a deal maker. <laughs> uh, I think, okay, my honest take on that, he didn't care about buying the house. He's yeah. just fucking, he's fucking with Archie. Yeah. No, I think he's kind of the Simpsons Gill of Riverdale, where he walks out and goes like, come on, victims, come on. Oh, another, another blown peel. Uh, oh, <laughs> poor Percy. Uh, very happy to see Molly Ringwald. I'm not like a big yeah. 80s movie head or anything mm-hmm. like that, but she is just a delight. And you kind of want mm-hmm. her to be on screen more. Is that Archie's, Archie's mom? mom? Okay, thank you. Sarah, yes. Sarah, I I um, literally don't know the names of any actors. No, yeah, 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 yeah. Sarah, um, real quick, because this is the continuing. The answer is going to be no. The answer will be no. <laughs> as but you, I need but to ask know. Me. I need to know. I need to know. It's continuing a bit of you not having seen any other pieces of media ever. Um, if you had to guess what famous movies Molly Ringwald was in. Oh, great ooh, question. Um, okay. What, I'm going to guess. What would you say? I'm going to mm-hmm. guess The Breakfast Club. Really good. Yeah. Really Why good. Am I? Did I get it? <laughs> yeah. I've, I was I've, wondering if any of us would just I've never lie. seen it. Just <laughs> I've never mean. seen it, but I, I know it's famous. Yep, you're correct. Hell yeah. Uh, See, uh, I know yeah, media. I, this is further proof that the only show you ever have to watch is Riverdale season six. <laughs> None yeah. but that for Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> I asked Molly Ringwald a question one time on the USC uh, campus oh. during uh, the Festival of Books uh, when she was presenting a book she wrote. And I asked, when do you know a story's done? Mm. And she said, you don't really. Oh, wow. It, you reach your deadline and you make peace with it. And I thought that that was Dude, amazing. Nothing more Riverdale has ever been said. <laughs> yeah great foreshadowing molly uh okay i've got a scenario to run you through dan we like to do these hypotheticals sometimes that are just not related to the show but just little interludes so let's say you've contacted the underworld to order a hit on your dad who's been terrorizing your small new york town okay i'm there okay and um, you were going to cancel it because you saw your boyfriend's dad in the hospital and that made you realize that dads are important. But then you get mm-hmm. a call from Anatole saying that the job's already done and to check your inbox. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Would you be A, happy or B, sad? Oh, wow. Um, before I've seen the inbox? Uh, after, mm-hmm. after you've seen after. the inbox. After. Yeah. And has my dad tried to firebomb any of my friends? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, he has actually. Yeah, yeah. like quite a few. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and how would my sister feel if I did this? Oh, she would uh, be he... probably pissed, you think? I'd be sad. Hmm. Wow. I'd be sad. Yet more proof that, uh, okay, here's the twist to that scenario here, Dan. <laughs> That's exactly what happened to Veronica Lodge in this episode of Riverdale. Oh my God. And she was indeed sad. <laughs> Proof that Riverdale is so true to the human experience. <laughs> yeah, that was very, very honest. Uh, I do wonder if they shot a reverse shot that sh- did, or an insert that showed what was in the email and then decided not to use it. Because <laughs> I'm very curious what the proof was. Yeah. Yeah. I would say, like, it's not a scenario where they're not trying to show gore because there's body parts in in, in boxes and in trash cans. Yeah, and things are pretty bloody. In oh, episode really? one, Cheryl does literally cut out Archie's still beating heart and hold it all off to the town. <laughs> yeah, and Archie was covered in blood in this episode. Yeah. And um, Dan, just so you're not skimped out on the details, uh, next episode, it is revealed that uh, Hiram was... Quote, shot in the head four oh, yeah. times and lit on fire. <laughs> <laughs> he was, yeah. Sorry if that wasn't clear. Yeah, so that's we how are he was getting killed. a picture of what she opened in her inbox. Yeah. There. I, this yeah. Is, you know, this is actually kind of a grizzly man situation where it's really more impactful that we're seeing her reaction to yeah. exactly. Yeah. 
Yes, that's uh, correct. Uh, glad Truly, that... Riverdale season six can only be compared to the works of Werner yeah. Herzog. <laughs> uh, his hands were zip tied, and he was shot in the he- back of the head four times, and then burned, and then buried in a shallow grave. Oh mm-hmm. God! So now we know what the picture was, or uh, yep. at least we can kind of guess at what. Yeah, I wonder at what stage. Because if it was buried, it would just be a mound of dirt. And it's like it's done. <laughs> I assure you. <laughs> it's it just a thumbs up of him with this, uh, with like a little <laughs> caption that said, "I killed him." Oh, oh my god! Um, oh, we have we have just a little bit of the episode left to get, and then some key questions. We're almost done here, Dan. Um, first, they said baby Anthony again. I'm going to note it every mm-hmm. time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Congratulations. You're now the proud owner of this structure. <laughs> Just love that line. I, love the delivery. I was obsessed with that. Uh, <laughs> as someone who has to do self tapes for like three line parts every once in a while, you don't know how to make it interesting. Mm-hmm. I was mm-hmm. really proud of that actress for, I'm yeah. sure she like took that sides where it was like you're in a burnt down house archie is buying it from his mom uh, mm-hmm. and she really made it she really gave it some sauce really good work there <laughs> yeah and i'm sure that she was also like oh that's the script i thought that was an audition piece yeah. like i thought that was i was gonna do something a little different but that's yeah. okay uh yeah great line delivery mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. okay bingo has powers all his legs are healed um yep this was the part of the show where like every scene that ended the way the musical cues and the editing worked, I kept being like, and the episode's over. No. Okay. It, and yeah. the episode's over. Not quiet. It was very return of the King. I had the exact yeah. experience. <laughs> it was like, okay, we're done. But of course we're not done until we get that final shot of the trash bag killer in the car with Glenn saying, you shouldn't have disrespected Betty. And so maybe they kind of want us to think it's Archie. But it's probably not. Mm. Is that what the idea is? Or we know no, it's no, not no, no, Archie? No, 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 We know it's not Archie. We know it's not. Okay. So cool. in the beginning of season five, when we chime skipped forward seven years, uh, Betty had spent those seven years in the FBI in this sort of like um, Sherlock Holmes Moriarty back and forth with the trash bag killer. Okay. Yeah, that's uh, his name, Trash Bag Killer. And he's back yeah, now. TBK. Back. It's, it's, TBK. It's weird to have like a direct reference to a real life serial killer as yeah. one of your mm-hmm. main antagonists. I don't understand. <laughs> there's okay. a. There's I'm joking. A, I'm jo- okay. Joking. Yeah. Yeah. yeah uh, sorry. Uh, <laughs> uh, you don't know. <laughs> you, you don't know. I felt the weight of you having to break that bad news. <laughs> and it was. <laughs> uh, I got to tell you about buying torture kill. Yeah. Uh, yes. But I love they started with TBK and then they're like, how do we justify this? Um, <laughs> that makes my improv brain happy. Okay, so that's the end of the episode. And um, Dan, we just have three real quick questions for you. Okay. Real quick questions. One, we have an award uh, that was introduced by our first guest, Oscar Matoya, um, called the Sin Pie Award, where it's who ate their scene, <laughs> left no crumbs, uh, keep in mind, uh, many of the core cast have, have been nominated. Also, a spider was the, the winner of our first episode. Um, and uh, there have been inanimate objects that have also been nominated and won. So what uh, character or feature in the episode for you stole the scene, took it away? I can't get over the guys, the ghoulie guys standing behind the main. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I love it. <laughs> the <laughs> background <laughs> ghoulies. Yeah. That, yes. That's my first instinct today. And Either look, them or no, no, guy... no, Dan, I, I have to stop you. Okay. Because this is the Riverdale season six podcast where the first idea is the best idea. Well, there you go. <laughs> it's the ghouly background actors. Perfect. Beautiful. Uh, next beautiful, next beautiful. is the Ross Bryant Notice Me Senpai Award. And <laughs> which of the characters in this episode would you most hope would notice you, Dan? Jeez. Um, would notice me. My first instinct is just it's got to be it's got to be Betty, just a classic American gal. And the girl now she's next in door. the FBI. Uh, the girl next door who now hunts down serial killers. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> so true. I love it. I think that's the first time a main cast members won. Mm. That's amazing. That's amazing. Yeah. I don't yeah. think you're wrong, though. Um, uh, yeah. And lastly, I forget the exact wording of this because it truly is the most quizzical question. But um, <laughs> 
who what <clears throat> moment receives the Britannia? I'm sorry, what? It's just the Britannia Award, but yeah. <laughs> it's just the Britannia Award. Britannia is 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 uh, the long form of Britta, the character that you met, uh-huh. who is just this mysterious uh, <laughs> child who calls Cheryl mistress. And in one episode, <laughs> when she finds out about the Abigail, Poppy, Cheryl of it all, she ends the episode going, "I no, I need you to explain that to me. I genuinely don't understand. And we don't know if that was in the script or not, or if that was just sort of the tale. <laughs> so, uh, what yeah. moment for you gets the Brita award um it's gotta be uh the quick flip on uh, or no, it's it's a hermana it's veronica's hermanas mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's, yeah it's that i think because i just read a tweet about about that idea of like writers giving hispanic characters full monologues in english and then just adding a spanish word mm-hmm. at the end to indicate yes, that they're yes. not an american character Oh, the actors from the show, Hiram Lodge himself has gone on record as saying, yeah, just end every sentence of mine with Iha. Yeah, Why not? Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's all you need. Uh, um, fantastic. Well, Dan, thank you so much for doing this. Oh, thank you for having me. Can I leave with a prediction? I don't have one. Oh, my but God. I, oh, yes. I, yes. I yes. feel yes. like I want to, like... Wait, the Dan Lippert prediction prediction oh, award. Yeah. award and it's not really an award it's a prediction yeah. but like so you know. many awards to track <laughs> <laughs> I, I i'd like to see uh, uh archie uh and betty uh and jughead and the dog kind of form their own riverdale justice league uh and, yes. um, and take on uh nana and abigail mm. yeah mm-hmm. i'm gonna tell you right now dan that that's exactly what happens. Wow. And they're not the only ones with powers. <laughs> so stay tuned. Oh my God. I love that they went for superhero. That's cool. yeah, yeah. so good. <laughs> so good. You gotta. Um, Dan, this has been great. Uh, and just on a scale of one to 53, how likely are you to watch the rest of Riverdale season six? Um, six. Great. Nice. Perfect. Solid. Yeah, that Solid. means, that means we're, we're more than likely to be able to have Great. you back on as a guest someday. <laughs> yes. With six being the highest. That's wonderful. <laughs> Dan, where can people find you? What are you? Uh, you do so many at, things. At Dan Lippert Cool on social media. And then uh, Man Dog Pod is my improv and conversation podcast with Ryan Rosenberg. And Big Grande website.com is where my group Big Grande sells all our podcasts and uh, f- uh short films and things like that a la carte to people hell yes and azzy how about you uh you can find me at i need azriel a-z-r-a-e-l on instagram you can also go follow the podcast at riverdale six pod on instagram and i'm sure we'll have other platforms by the time this episode goes up Yes. You can find me on Instagram at Sarah Rose Kaplan. Sarah with no H Rose, like the flower Kaplan of the sea. And I mostly just post about upcoming improv stuff. I'll probably be posting about this podcast. I make weird music. And uh, sometimes when I'm lucky, I get to play it in just baffling D&D streams with my good friend Omar. Yes. And I'm Omar. You can find me at Omar Najam uh, Film on Instagram. Um, depending on when this comes out, I just hope you're just having a good summer or winter wherever you are in the world, taking it easy, enjoying life. And on a super good thing, I'd like to just add a little fun fact. In the show Miss Marvel, I wrote the uh, ice cream pizza line, and uh, those oh, were originally yeah. signs. Hell yeah, <laughs> that's a little that's a little scene I did. And those are originally audition uh, audition sides, so it's a very fun little thing that all connects our episode. So oh, yeah. and I can't wait to see where this season goes. Heck. Yeah, that's amazing. Uh, thank you all for joining us. And Omar, would you please do us the honors of our traditional closing? Absolutely. As we say at the end of every episode, bye.